If you've been watching me for the past six months or so, you'll know by now that me, I, me, do love a good Sims spin-off. While that's a lie, there are many a spin-off that I dislike. Well, I did say I'd love a good Sims spin-off, so I guess I do like a good one. I dislike the bad ones. Anyway, what? If you're a fan of The Sims and of a certain age, you will most definitely have heard of the My Sims series. And if you haven't, well, I've got news for you. You have now. I myself, yeah, me, had My Sims for the Nintendo DS. I played it for a little while, you know, me as a baby. Went fishing and got bored and never touched the game again until 15 years later, which was the other week. Mad that the child version of me was more intelligent than adult me. The My Sims series were a collection of six games, My Sims, My Sims Kingdom, My Sims Party, My Sims Racing, My Sims Agents, and last but very very not least, oh, My Sims Sky Heroes. Released on a wide variety of platforms, from the DS to the Wii, a re-release on PC and mobile phones, and even Blackberry. And the last title was even released on Xbox 360 and the PS3. The series had a very short life and spanned three very, very, very busy years. From 2007 to 2010, God rest her soul, gone and probably forgotten. To be honest, it seems a really big jump away from the original Sims. In the My Sims series, the characters are more chibi and it's said to cater to a worldwide audience, particularly a Japanese audience as the original Sims didn't perform very well over there. But it's not only the look of the characters, it's aspects like, for instance, having needs. My Sims have no needs. Yeah, they can have a nap, but only to pass the day. But part of the challenge in these spin-off games is balancing your time with doing the quests and also making sure that you look after yourself. Gotta think of yourself, haven't you? I'm afraid I barely even had enough patience to play through all of the DS games. I'm sorry, I won't be going into any of the Wii games at all. Today, we're going to have a gander at all the handheld versions of this weird spin-off that is My Sims. And this is your spoiler alert, by the way. Spoiler alert, by the way. The first game released in the My Sims franchise is My Sims. It was released in September 2007 and developed by Tosco, a Japanese game developer that specializes in doing commissioned work for game companies. We are welcomed by a friendly boy in a dog costume waving to us. So we know that this game is for the gays. We're swiftly followed by our create a sim page and the two genders we can choose from. Pointy top of the head or pointy side of the head. There's not a wide variety of customization, but enough for me to want these oblique eyes, which must mean cunty. I give my sim lovely lab rat red eyes and we are ready to slay. Much like Animal Crossing, we choose the name of our town we are going to which can be a maximum of 20 alphanumeric characters, so I must use these 20 alphanumeric characters very responsibly and call it Pooland. The boat rider be like, I haven't been there in a while, and I'm not going to lie, he's kind of been rude AF. We disembark the boat and start chasing that child that welcomed us into the game earlier. Am I committing a hate crime? Why am I chasing him? And then he ends up in the old racquetball court. He's called Tim, and there's only one Tim I know. We are told to select the human-shaped eye Icon for some reason and we go meet the mayor and let her know that the main character has arrived and of course she's bloody called Helen. They finally ask me my name and well at this point isn't it obvious it's me. Bloody poo. Wait no. Time to meet the locals. Charming my way into the social elite of the town I chat to this miserable get Tyler who is the tailor and the state of him and we clear the fog in Ewan the policeman's heart by crying at him and he do be nodding. We also come across this bint named Ashley, self-proclaimed pretty damsel who loves flowers. Well, sounds like I've got a bit of competition in this town and Helen has asked me to check on Ashley, that evil, evil woman. Ashley, with a gun to my head, forces me to plant flowers all around the town and this is kind of difficult, but once that's done, she gives me a big fat hug and some money. I may forgive, but I'll never forget. I'm then instructed for some well-earned rest in my new home to the east 
and I don't know where East is, but eventually I find it. A new dawn finally arrives, and this bitch is trapped in her suit of armour, and of course she's bloody called Olivia. Disclaimer. I do not mean anything by this, but of course they are called by their name because they are called it. Well, she's given us money now too. I ain't no Alan Sugar, but come on love, this ain't how you run a business. Fisherman Joe is the next miserable get to meet on our list, and it doesn't take long for us to get him to crack a smile. But what's wrong with all these people? I run into this sleepy bitch who was just sleeping and then asks us, Oh, was I just sleeping? She is slaying though, we do love a gal who can't be arsed. Tim reveals the secret to the suit is that he wanted to attract more people to the island. Well, I'm sorry mate, how's that gonna work when all you do is sand out the racquetball court all day? Now I'm stumped. I don't know what to do. I whip out the trusty walkthrough and realise I have to play a cheeky game of racquetball. And oh boy, am I talented at this. I go and make some lays, lays, lays for my arch enemy Ashley and it's like some baby sensory game, goo goo gaga bitch. Why not, I'll bloody go fishing too and listen to this delightful and nostalgic music that plays to attract the fisherman f wait, not the fisherman, well, can attract the fisherman. Animal Crossing who? Fisherman Pooh has slain. Got 1k for that bloody fish, I'm fucking rolling in it mate. And now I'm back to not knowing what the heck I'm doing. I take a picture of this random tree and give it to the policeman. Pro photographer, you know what? I'll treat myself to a cheeky game of racquetball and I'm, I'm a pro gamer with that score. Another day, another dollar, am I right? And I swear to God, if that Helen says the exact same thing again, I'll bloody blow my top. Alas, no top has been blown, because she says a different thing this time. And I just really don't know what I'm doing. I've written in my notes that I'm playing the cunty game, but didn't I just call it the baby sensory game? But whatever, I just play the game because I don't know what to do. Now we are a two star island. This is just like Animal Crossing, you know, the newest one. Hey, this game was just way ahead of its time. I tell someone I'm not a customer, I am Pooh. Who did I even say this to? But the, these townsfolks, they're kind of pissing me off. They're not even working in their stores, yet they're focusing on work and being like, why don't I have any customers? Get a bloody life, am I right, my fellow oomphies? Off to the highlands I go, and I come across my doppelganger, while she's the evil one, because she's being rude. And of course she's called Marie. I know a Marie. Forced into some manual labour, she makes me put all this random decorations around the highland area, so I just put the shite anywhere. She gets a dollar while I get a dime. That's why I shit on company time. She is right moody cow, but at least I get paid. Tyler the tailor then exposes a scandal on the island that a man of his grand old age is an apprentice on an apprentice wage. You know this bloke is getting paid like two pound an hour. No wonder he's bloody miserable. Wandering around the town aimlessly, I decide to name Sophie's store something poo related. The cooking cake man finally reveals his secret I didn't ask about. He says that his cousin Gino De Campo is a famous Italian chef and we know all about that if you've ever watched ITV or been into a bookstore in the 2010s. However, this bloke says his dream is to mix cake and Chinese food together. Wow, reach for the stars my man. He then goes on to tell us the bitch Marie is looking for us. But I go and see her and she's actually not, so I'd take everything he says with a grain of salt from now on. Finally, after a good night's kip, Marie actually wants to see us and you know what? Okay, slay. Hello Marie, now you want me. This girl really found a paraglider in like the bin or something and wants us to test it out. She also cleverly lets us know that she is not liable if there are any accidents. Wow, what a bitch. For this mini game, we have to blow into the mic and I can imagine doing this on a DS, you'd probably be like, pass out or something. But I have my trusty M key to lead the way. Well, I slayed it, but it doesn't make her any less of a bitch. I check on our Olivia for some reason, and the silly cow is trapped under the table. What's she playing at? Well, she gives me some more money. Right, love, I'm no Sarah and Alias from Strictly, but I don't think this is how you run a store. Crack out the Prosecco, fellas. We're finally a three-star town. Helen tells us to look forward to more annoying tourists while she's weirdly gyrating. The bloke who brought us to Pooland is now part of the furniture. He takes us for a ferry ride to the entertainment area and oh, the thrill I get from my star level going up slightly. 
all aboard everyone, and everything apart from this highly entertaining house of mannequin that's like that Doctor Who episode mannequin time, there's a casino and the club. So after daytime, I'm severely entertained. But wait, I thought it was an open return and I have to pay 50 quid to go back home. Helen is now talking about this new ranger, but initially I'd thought that Helen had misgendered Marie, so I was calling Helen all the names under the sun. I don't even like Marie, but don't misgender her. Well, it turns out that Helen was talking about some other bloke, so never mind. I'll, I'll go and play racquetball. I receive a new racquetball from our Tim. I keep playing racket till I can racket no more, and then off I go to Marie to be her general dog's body again. Look at this dialogue. Why did they actually make her such a bitch? She really is the evil, evil twin. Off I go to blow off some steam by racketing again. At last, I finally meet the forest ranger, a timid lad who is the forest ranger. And he's kind of cringe, not gonna lie. He didn't want to talk to people, which is why he became a ranger, which is kind of relatable. However, much like Marie, he wants me to improve the look of the forest. So I pull up some dead trees and put some stuff down instead. And now I've enhanced the forest and I'm on 4K now. Slay. I try my hand at fishing again, but I keep on fucking losing it. So you know what? Fuck that fish. I drown my sorrows in the casino. And you know what they say? Papa needs a new pair of shoes or something like that. And did you know that 99% of gamblers stop before the big win? So I play this game with a genuine looking bloke doing some genuine things. And I don't get it. So I play another game that I don't get, and then I play the last game and I still don't get it. I play and don't get it until it's the morning and they kick me out of the casino. Exiting the casino, I meet this bitch Elizabeth, the evil, evil early bird that she is. After pulling an all-nighter, this is not the type of person you want to talk to. So I chat to her and this bitch tells me I'm not a good conversation partner. So you know what? Fuck you. You are a B-Tech princess peach. And I keep on choosing the wrong option, but there's so many different types of music playing, it's stressing me out. But I finally prove the evil is wrong, that I am good conversation. Well, she attempts to sell me a pet's house for 10k, which I just go along with to humour her. Yeah, go on, I'll have it. Knowing full well I do not have 10k. News on the forest front also. A dog has appeared in the wild and the forest ranger wants us to make like animal feed and I'm really on the struggle bush trying to catch a bloody fish. Tyler the bastard is all down in the dumps and the townsfolk they've all been bitching about him for being antwacky. How pathetic. Now he can design clothes. This is basically just Animal Crossing and he gives me money for my rubbish design too. Now sleepy old Sophie, working class hero, wants us to design some furniture. So as usual, I pearlify it. And as my reward, she gives me the essence of the forest. Whatever that is. Then we finally reach level four. At our grand level of fourness, apparently more areas are available for us to explore. The mayor bitch then has the cheek to say, oh, it's weird however, since you've come to this town, everything's been going so smoothly. Well, you know what? It's because I've been working my arse off. So I check out this mountain area and this bitch thinks I'm that other bitch, Elizabeth. You know, that horrible one. You know what? Fuck off. I'm so far too swag to be her. And like, why is she shouting at me about the mountain? So I try the befriending thing and I fucked it all up by getting angry at her. But you'll never believe what she's fucking called. She's called Tracy. No offence to any Tracys out there. But what is even going on? Tracy is now blaming me for her getting scammed with this job. Bitch, it's a living job. You've got your house. Us, my sims. We don't need food. We don't need the toilet. What could you possibly want for, you stupid, stupid woman? You don't have any expenses. With this woman Tracy we have this mini game and we can dig stuff like precious minerals and money and we get points and we can trade these precious precious points for precious minerals and it sounds like a shite deal to me to be honest reluctantly I get on with it because that's all I can bloody do in this game Tracy then tells us she's gonna open a paragliding thing that will be more exciting than the other paragliding and you know what leave me the fuck out of it you and Marie are just horrible horrible people. She tells me she's gonna borrow Marie's paragliding thing. 
How's that even gonna work? You know what? I can't be asked. Tracy forces me to do a test run, and whatever you say, this is just my vessel. My soul is on a much larger and greater journey. She then tells me to have a nice flight. She is actually such a bitch. Why did... Uh, how could they make a character so horrible? Now I have achieved the certified bronze master, whatever that is. But the end is nearly in sight. We are nearly five star. So I was just dowsing and collecting statue parts because the walkthrough maybe had mentioned that I'd need them in the future. We are making a monster statue and we're gonna get a big surprise. And finally, level five, the town symbol has been erected and that is definitely not a green monster. We meet a child called Martin who can fly a plane. And I don't know whether I'm reading too much into this, but is he flirting with me? So whilst waiting for his plane to get fixed, I go ruin the forest by placing many a statue on the ground. And I sleep for many a day, because apparently it takes approximately five days for Martin's plane to get fixed. And now we can go skydiving. Martin, disgustingly then, mentions the missus in passing, says that she'll be missing him. I don't know, I feel dirty now, being flirted with by a married man. This dirt on my hands, will require something more abrasive. So I go drown my sorrows in the club, splashing 500 quid. And wait, it's really shit. What a rip off. And there's not even a drown to sorrows. Well, there's a scuba diving bit that you can unlock, but I will not because I cannot be arsed with this game anymore. We are five stars, I'm content. My Sims Kingdom was released a little over a year later after its predecessor in October 2008, which again was developed by Tosco. We are greeted with a title screen with fucking Tim again. Oh, hello mate. In this game, much like its predecessor, we are going to another island, but it is a different island, and the music do be music in, but today we are heading to Pooland. But we'll look with a little heart at the end. How sweet. So, I create our poo again. We can choose from various eyes. Horrific eyes, cunty eyes, all these chill eyes. Or grandmother wearing mascara eyes. So I opt for the chill eyes this time. And for the hair. Wow, we can have a sexy pompadour. And this sporty hair? Well, that is something. Or we can use some headwear from these two options which is headphones or one can suffer the pharaoh's curse and wear the enlightened mask or i guess you can beat squid game too but enough silliness back to work we have a cheeky cutscene everyone's happy and chill which is disturbed by some bloody monarch music and the king wants a cupcake recipe how gross but the king rudely states to us I don't know you. Well, mate, I don't know you either. Can you imagine me saying that to King Charles? He's not my king. He's not my king. Oh, wait, I forgot in this game I'm called Pooh, I guess. I'm elusive, mysterious, even sexy, perhaps. And then I just had a, a king affair jump scare. I thought the king was just going to stop at I want you in his sentence to Ellen. Oh, wow. The king's gone. The Ellen says, the Ellen, the yes, the Ellen, she says to me, nice haircut. I don't know, I read it in a, quite a bully voice, like, nice haircut. Is she being sarcastic though? Is she? Ellen goes to retrieve the key to my house, and I don't know, I think she's lost it, and she's out, says now it's out for polishing. That old chestnut, I've heard that one before. So, I get forced into delivering a parcel to Dr. F for her, and well, this is the famous Dr. F then. Dr. F then starts doing some F shenanigans, but listen mate, I ain't got all day for this. And oh golly gosh, I've now inquired an extractor from Dr. F. Please stop. But then he's throwing a tantrum or something, I don't know. Uh, you're not a bit old for all this. Thankfully I'm saved by the bell, as here comes Ellen with my key, and I have acquired the key to home one, which means I must be like an MP and own more than one home in the future. I decide to sleep because I have been told to go to sleep, and then there's some cutscene and some rapscallion is roaming around the town stealing buildings and shit. Ellen, the stupid bitch, wakes me up at stupid o'clock as if it's my problem. 
She tells me that the townsfolk are ready to pack it in. And you know what, Ellen? Good for them. However, Dr. Raff didn't even know a tragedy had occurred. SMH. You know that epic feeling, guys. You know that epic feeling when your moustache quivers with scientific achievement. And what an honour. Dr. Raff has allowed me to use his synthetron to make a flower bed. Oh, how blessed and exciting this life is. But I've I decided that instead of doing the easy route, I decided that I would run round extracting things. All I had to do was place it on the ground. Oh dearie. Dr. F is now sleeping in genius. Ellen then tells us that she will totally die if the king walks in. And right on cue, the old king walks in. Go on, Ellen. Do it. Do it. You said you would. But I want to know why is the king so obsessed with cupcakes? Is it cupcake or is it cupcake the rapper? Once the king leaves, both Pooh and Ellen sigh with relief. And it is extremely cringe. I don't know, I don't want to be associated with her, but that's it, we're level 2 of the old star department. So in the new Poodum, people are apparently miserable here also, so we try and cheer up this glum bastard called Roy. He tells us that he's seen better days, then goes on to ask us if we can remember the dream that he told us. Listen me, I've only been playing this game like 30 minutes or so, I, I don't remember your dream. His dream? In fact, it is to be a royal supplier of furniture. And it's kind of pathetic if I'm being honest. He tells me this expression will be better when I'm chatting to him. Like, he wants me to cry at him? Oh, he wants me to cry at him, okay. And for crying on each other's shoulders like some human centipede of comfort, he hands me a mysterious magnet. I run into this bloke called McFreely and something tells me that women may or may not be his favourite guy. And saying that now, I can't believe the lifespan of memes has decreased so severely. I only wrote this like two weeks ago, and now I'm not sure whether I should even include it. Anyway, yes, this is the legendary Chaz McFreely with classics like I'm Chaz and I'm McFreely to be who what I want to be. <laughs> what? I happen upon some young bitch named Victoria and she's just like me for real. I've only met her like one second and she's already told me that she's in a foul mood. She's kinda cringe though, she lives alone and yet she's saying mommy and daddy. Which later I realise that she's 10 so it's kinda fucked up that our family have gone on holiday and let her alone right? I'm sure that's like illegal isn't it? Anyway she goes on to say mommy and daddy are big fibbers. What? I don't need them anymore. What? Okay. <laughs> what? Oh, Vicky. She lends me a, a racket much like on My Sims where we play racket. This is just bog standard tennis. So we battle this pleasant child in tennis like we are in Wimbledon. But I don't have any anything funny to say about Wimbledon. So I'll just say Judy Murray is Andy Murray's mum. When we score, who is the only one who receives cheers? Hurrah! And it's match point or something? And fuck that twat girl, because I lose, but I acquire cryptic coil from her? How intriguing. Oh my god, could it be the world famous chef Gino De Campo? You know, that other chef bloke's cousin. He compliments my name. Why thank you. I thought of it myself, don't you know? Guys, you know that feeling when you're called Richard and you be like, um, my compass is broken. Well, Richard's compass is broken, everyone. He then tells me he's gotta see the unexplored, not the already found. Wow, he's just a fountain of insightful proverbs, our dick. Dr. F can now, now smell what I have a compass on me, and he is happy to fix it. Luckily, my friends have given me all this random shite like the magnet and the cryptic coil required to fix this compass and now Richard be like my compass be working and then we ride his boat across the pond I meet some bint named Emily whose dream is to meet this bloke who sails the cosmos looking for his true love how pathetic why can't they have cool dreams where they like I don't know become a cat or something old woman Mary jump scare we meet this pleasant geezer called Hank and he be like 
Do you want to know all about my troubles? And you know what, Hank? Yeah, I do, mate. He says, the fishmonger gonna be mad at him. But mad at you for what? We meet the town sheriff, Hank, who do be trembling. And he's like, scared of jokes or jokes? He's scared of jokes. No, he's scared of ghosts. He's scared of ghosts, not jokes. And you know what? Grow up, mate. And now there's a hippo jump scare. Emily says something about a gondola base or something, but I'm not really listening because I don't like her. But she begs us and begs us to make one and that gives us like blueprints or something. So we go and spill all the tea to our gal Ellen and she'd be like, oh no, not the gondola base. And I'm like, fuck the gondola base, am I right? And right on cue, the king waltzes on in with his king music. Oh, he's so demanding. We're not a monarchy stan in this house. This kingdom is not very kingdomy. Right, so, silly moment. I thought we were fixing a gondola, you know, like the Venice style gondola. But no, it's like the going up the mountain type of gondola. So I was like, how can we Venice up a mountain? Anyway, anyway, we get that key to home two, just as expected. And here we are at good old level three. So Dr. F be like, why am I troubled? And I'm like, why am I not troubled? In it. He then goes on to say that his life is a sippy cup of despair. And you know what? Same. We go see this bloke and give him the blueprints for the gondola base to make it. And oh my God, just like in the building trade, we need to extract raw materials to produce a result. So naturally, to build the gondola base, we need two love hearts and three water droplets. Then I'm told to head to the gondola base. However, whilst on my way there, I happen upon a zoo. And who else but our old friend Tim is the zookeeper there. But what the fuck, he doesn't even remember me. He's a zookeeper now. Bit of a big promotion from being a racket. They're just hiring anyone these days. Tim says some bastard let all the animals loose. And Tim gives us a camera to take pictures of the animals and that'll put them back in the zoo. And he'd be wearing that stupid costume. So I'd be searching for this gondola base far and wide and come across this dancing bitch, DJ Candy. When you're a DJ, you'd be like, chicka pow, oom um, oom, um, chicka pow. <laughs> you know what, enough of that. So I'd really be searching for that gondola base and all I needed to do was give some shite to Dr. F. He'd be like, you're lucky I'm insane. And you know what? Same. Well, finally gondola time and we ride and there's a cut scene where that mischievous music plays and we happen upon the villain and he do be zapping up houses and stuff and then flies off in a UFO. Who is this bad bastard though? Up the mountain there's this kawaii house. Surely some cute person lives there. Nope. Just a weird bloke doing weird things. Goodbye. So I go see Ellen, tell her off my findings, and who would have guessed, here comes the bloody king. But who really did win the IDGAF war? We get our key to home three, and gain our penultimate star. Here is where I thought the game was so easy. Oh, the famous last words. We go outside and there's a cheeky cutscene with Dr. F, and that old man do have some speed. He goes to some crash site where some bloke's head stuck in the ground, and it turns out it's Martin, the married man from that other game. I was gonna say, they could have picked a more interesting character to bring into this game, but you know what? No, they couldn't. They're all as bloody boring as each other. He talks weird too, like someone taking the piss out of an English or Australian person. Like, I don't mean to linger. You're gone. You're trying to pinch that linger too. No one speaks like this. We need to find a reclusive rotor and a shifty shaft. Um, excuse me, what? Dr. F says, watch out for that shaft, it's shifty. Excuse me, what? I get the old fishing rod back from Ellen, and I do be catching fish. The fish want me, and women fear me, or something like that. And I'm showing the fish that I have caught in the fish encyclopedia. Oh, so I read that we um, give it some bloke named Hank. He was here again. I look at my little people encyclopedia, and oh yeah, he's that peasant bloke. So I run as fast as my little my sims legs can take me, which is not very fast, and give him a cheeky kipper. And he's like, please sir, give me one more fish and i'm like oh right i'm giving you both fish fine i didn't want them anyway in return of course he is the one who gives me that shifty shaft 
that cheeky bastard. So now Dr. Raff wants to make a mecha dog, but he wants me to get all the materials. Fuck off. I, oh, not really, actually. I will do it. Why are all these items called weird stuff, though? Bewilding balancer, a sly sensor, a dog dynamo, a stupefying speaker, and a perplexing paw. All I have to say is, why me? I obtain most of the items by doing things for people, like giving some homeless child a stove and playing that ghost mini game, which is kind of cool, but there's an extreme scary ghost at the end, which is terrifying. And now I know why Hank is scared. There's also this constellation mini game, and yeah. Guys, I've written the following from the anguish of my soul, caused by the kayaking mini game, which requires us to kayak on a small circuit by using both sides of the touchscreen on our DS and getting a time below 55 seconds. As I'm emulating it, it's rather a struggle and at my grand old age, the worry of getting carpal tunnel, I decided this was just one game I couldn't complete. I even scoured the internet for another way I could obtain that final item required to produce that dog. The perplexing poor. However, I wasn't content with just ending the game here. I wanted to see it through to the end. One night, whilst tossing and turning, thinking about what the ending to My Sims Kingdom for DS could possibly be, an idea happened upon me. I decided to dust off my old drawing tablet like some sort of forgotten ancient technology and use my laptop as a weird makeshift DS, and after many attempts, my arms weak and trembling from the scribble motion this mini game required, I bloody did it. The immense amount of joy filling up my dread ridden vessel has enlightened my soul for like 10 minutes, and then remembered that I've got to go to work and like do dishes and make dinner and stuff like that. So that didn't last, but anyway, old Mary, she calls me John Hancock or something, and finally, perplexing poor, my beloved. It just goes to show you guys, you should never give up. So I give all the random shite that I've gathered to Dr. F and we activate the Mecha dog. How cute. So I read that the dog was in the zoo by the croc, so off to the zoo I go and the croc is in love with the dog and the crocodile breaks out of his enclosure and we go into the enclosure and see the bloke who's caused all the strife secret lair and the animals do be running about. Oh, so this is the fella. This is the villain, Dr. Nefario, and he's like, Oh, my life's work. No, he's probably more like, No, my life's work. And then he's like, Oh, of course, a lot of trouble for this town. Like, no shit, mate. You made me kayak. Oh, and here's the king right on cue, and the villain bloke gives him the keys to his UFO. I guess this is the kind of bribery that you do to be let off being beheaded or something. But the king does fuck all though. They want to forgive him. I disagree. He made me kayak, and for that, he should be lined up and shot. Oh, and we're all having a laugh now, I guess. Oh, what a horrible and unsatisfying ending. Fuck all the townsfolk. Fuck all of you. You know what? Fuck the lot of you. So, Ellen winks at me. So, for all my hard work, what, what do I get? I get a thank you, a record player, a wink, and a pat on the bum. No harm done. Five months after My Sims Kingdom was released, then came the third instalment of the My Sims series, My Sims Party, which was released in March 2009 and was developed by Hudson Soft Company. The game is said to include 41 minigames and we find ourselves back in a different town, but with the same people. We take part in festivals and get more stars for the town. Tim's here, still in his stinky creature costume, this time accompanied by a femboy with a monkey. What a sight to behold. We have a few modes we can choose from, dream festival mode, mini game mode, trade mode or select language. So I guess my only option here is dream festival mode and the music be somewhat melancholic. As always we create our sim and the two genders we can pick from this time is inquisitive or mischievous. And yes, my favourite type of eye, beauty mark. And there's narrow eyes, sleepy eyes, and I'm tempted but I end up going for the beauty mark as it is cunty. However, 
The hair options are shit. Where is my red-headed poo representation? We can allocate points to Sim's power and speed and stuff. So I'll just be an all-rounder cause CBA. I give poo a double barrel name, we are poo poo, as we are a posh bitch with our beauty mark. Here is Tim, the twat, telling me he hasn't seen me around here before, but I remember him. It's almost embarrassing as that time when I went up to some random customer I hadn't seen in years and tried to chat to him, but he couldn't even remember me. What the hell? We have a house and everyone in town calls it my house. It's like they've got some sort of inside joke about my house. Piss off the lot of you. Apparently there's a festival tomorrow and Tim's gonna pick us up and what the hell's going on? This is a whole load of nothing for nothing. But eventually we meet the force to be reckoned with the femboy and or monkey, and they are shook when I tell them that I'm a factual fact from Pooh Land. So, at long last, we enter the festival and Tim is hosting it. The first mini game has that Helen from the first My Sims game, and it's called Bus Stop. But guys, we must get her on that bus, because if she misses the tea party, she is out of the old lady tea party society, and we just can't have that happening. So we mash the button with all our might and get to the bus and of course pro gamer poo wins. The final game is soccer bounce which is basically how many keepy uppies can you do and I didn't read the rules so I kind of fucked it up but no need to worry because much like Mario Party I got a most beautiful eyelash bonus and ended up winning. We're also introduced to another mayor and I guess we can't get the staff these days. The mayor bitch keeps on calling it my house again and it's starting to piss me off. Well, she tells me all about my house and I didn't even ask about it and then asks if we'd like to hear it all again. No, I don't. Aw, some of my old friends from Pooland the first to hear. Aw, Tyler, the old twat. Pleased to make your acquaintance. And there's some bloke called Vic Vector, who I'm sure is someone's Tumblr sexy man. Reluctantly, I do the happy festival and I'm shit at the mini games that require the touch screen and stylus, so I end up at the bottom of the leaderboard. I was gonna rage quit, but I got the cuntiest cunt bonus and ended up winning, so I guess the moral of the story is, unlock all these festivals. But the clappy mini game was my last straw because that twat cheated and I just can't be arsed with this anymore. I'm sure it's from with a friend or something, but for some reason, I doubt it. Three months later, in June 2009, the fourth instalment of the series was released, My Sims Racing, and I am getting PTSD, as it was developed by Artificial Mind and Movement. <laughs> <laughs> the same fellas who made the game, the one and only, the classic, Sims 2 Pets for Game Boy Advance. Now you know what, I said I hate that game, but is it bad I kinda miss it? Yeah, I guess it is. I do love to suffer. This time we are not greeted by friendly Tim, instead it is this ugly bloke doing an offensive gesture towards us. Stuff of nightmares. On the title screen we also see the Mount Rushmore of the famous My Sims characters. This is my Mount Rushmore. This game raised me. I've never played this game in my life. Crazy how those rocks formed in the shape of presidents. I wonder if there's a prudence shaped rock out there. Maybe I'll make something of myself one day. Alas, back to the video at hand. We be creating our poo now, and I present the two genders of the racing game. Bunches or no bunches. But the majority of my viewers are American, so I guess it's pigtails, right? So onto the fit, I choose my helmet. But wait, we don't have to wear a helmet. We can wear a hair. So, I'll have the pompadour, but hold the sexy this time. Shosuke Higashita, eat your heart out. Vem aí, a barata Josuke Higashikata. Onto the eyes, with those devious eyes, we are given a cheeky goatee to go alongside it. And oh my god, that feeling when you're like suave and you get wiggly out eyebrows. And oh my god, that feeling when you're content and you be like, look guys, I'm all of Jojo's Bizarre Adventure now. Suddenly, I'm slightly taken aback as the Sims be talking in Simlish. I've not heard a sim voice in so long. I customise my car by putting all this shite on it. And oh yeah, looking swag. Just call me Jeremy Clarkson. But 
because of course not because I did bad in my A levels and look at me now I own a brewery. So in honour of Jojo I am called Poo Joestar and my stand is like Prudence or something. I don't know, I'm talking shite. So, story mode. Here is Sir Charles, I guess he's the mayor. He's being a man and saying stuff about these legendary racetracks, well, if you say so. Well, I am indeed a person who can make people's blood pumping or something. Oh, this shall be great. So the repulsive dude from the beginning is actually called Old Gabby. Oh, this game should be terrible fun. Look at me swerving all over the shop. Almost had a head-on collision with this bitch. 50-50 split. What the fuck? It ain't my fault. Will my premium be affected? No! So it turns out I am the worst driver in the world and I've lost the garage old Gabby wanted me to go to. So I attempt to do the glitch that I saw in the speedrun two minutes before I had started this game. I don't know how to do it. But after another head-on collision, I find old Gabby and oh god, he's so creepy. And he calls my house your ass. And wait a minute, old Gabby is also getting into my tiny car too? Wait a minute, no, I did not consent to this. So, reluctantly I drop him off. And why did he walk off like that? And there's some weird intro and I'm like in a race now. But this game, they are like cheating. They haven't, I haven't been told the controls. Like, how do I drift? How do I get the turbo boost? How do I even use the turbo boost? How do I even use the items? I guess I'll just be fending for myself these days then. I get hit with a tree. Eggs. Bubbles. Footy balls. Like, come the fuck on England, but what the hell? So I try again and do even worse, so I, I rage quit. I decide to assist the famous chef, Gino. He's gonna be late for work, so I give him a lift, the silly twat. And once I've dropped him off, he then asks if I can take him to go and buy some mushrooms. I'm sorry mate, you're asking a bit too much off me there. And now he's got flame in his eyes. So I managed to connect my controller somehow, but I cannot drift as I have input the I've inputted like the the buttons wrong. And it's like every time I press the drift, it like opens up the settings and everything comes up at the top. So um but, but but you you know no 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 enough of that you're here to watch about this brilliant game so enough of the jargon talk and that look at me now i'm at the top of the podium two years in a row sounds really great i admit but three years has a better ring to it but i have to be pl first place to move on and i'm still working out the kinks but whilst attempting to drift i accidentally closed down the whole what? software so I'm just sitting in silence, wondering what the hell am I doing with my life. Anyway, I finally come first and here we go. Stunning old Gabby gives me some blueprints and thank you Sir Charles, I am level 2. Sir Charles be like, ooh, bet you're wondering what you can do with those bro blueprints. And you know what, no I'm not because old Gabby's already told me what I can do with them. So go on, jog on. And then we get an old Gabby jump scare lovely. I upgrade something? Don't ask me what, I'm not a mechanic. And no, I did not sink the Titanic. Old Gabby be drilling, old Gabby be hammering, and hands me a carefully wrapped up present. And I guess this is how it works here. And we run into the legendary Chas McFreely, the twat. So I be winning, Sir Charles be giving me shite, and there's this weird cruise ship level with very weird goings on. If things can't get any worse, I get stuck down a random hole, but in some miraculous super moment, I win. So through being a successful racer, I manage to unlock a spooky area like whiz pig ghost head goings on. And here we have the amazing patrons of spooky levels such as Goth Boy and Mel the Mummy. Best characters Mel the Mummy be like, I'm the geezer from Geezer. That's amazing. Whoever wrote that deserves an award. You get the proper Prudence Pun Award. Congrats. So my winning streak ends and becomes so much of a losing streak that in true Prudence fashion, I keep hitting myself with my own footy ball and rage quit, only to never touch the game again. Three months later, in September 2009, My Sims Agents was released, developed however by the same company that developed the first two My Sims games, Tosco. Ooh, how cool, we are like little spies but I guess we're agents. What's the difference between spies and agents, I wonder? 
I guess a spy is like totally spies and an agent is like Dale Cooper. I guess spies slay and agents just get their job done. I don't know. I'm not a genius. So we're into the fifth game of My Sims now and I'm not gonna lie, I'm sick of Poo Land. Hence the name. So this time there's no descriptions for these eyes, so I will call these eyes that I'm choosing the bitch eyes. However, they do describe the hair, so I'll look at every single item of hair and find funny ones because this is my favourite hobby now. Manish cute too. <laughs> what does that even mean? And party style three. It's giving my me as a child. <laughs> How funny. And career woman too. Who named these? How funny. And mash one. And at least we have our all reliable, our sexy pompadour. So you're only allowed to wear sunglasses if you compromise and have the mannish cute two hairstyle. And I'm not about that. I need a bit of creative freedom in my life. We strike a few poses. Make sure this is the correct look for this bitch who will soon become poo. So we also have an assistant, but we can't customise him. But I can call him my most creative and favourite name, Male One. Now in the headquarters, we read the Daily Star or something. Male One then tells us there's a message from the big boss. I don't know if this is just me, but I always imagine the big boss to have rolled up sleeves. Tell me in the comments if you are a big boss and if you roll up your sleeves. He tells us of an artifact discovered in Big Fat Shite that's gained the attention of the national press. And you know what? We have to protect our dearest shite from any potential threat and capture this dangerous criminal. That's the whole quest of the game, by the way. And oh wow, there's another mayor. What the hell? Why not? So male one is supposed to come with me, but I'm a lone wolf, I don't want you here. He hasn't even heard of Big Fat Shite though, how can he even help? He wishes me luck and, oh well, we decide he's excited about coming now. Male one then proceeds to tell me to go and do some exercise. Listen mate, look at me, I'm the pinnacle of health. Our exercise is this mini game called Radar Run, and the music is so cool and it's actually kind of fun. Male one may be onto something here. Who else but fucking Martin picks us up from the train station. He is a taxi driver now, apparently. What happened? We need Martin Law from going from a pilot to a taxi driver in two years. There must be some sort of misconduct for this kind of dramatic demotion. Martin interrupts my little train of thought by saying not to keep the bloke waiting. Um, why are you talking like me? And the mayor is a bloke now? You know what? Wow. This game has so many instructions compared to the other games. It's like the game knows that my brain stopped developing 20 years ago. Oh look, and there's Mayor Hopkins. Look at the bloody state of him. And you know what? He says to me and Mayor One that we, the sickening beings that we are, are funny looking. What xenophobic old twat he is. But God bless Mayor One, he do be singing my praises. Cause I am such a great agent and well, I must be to be featured in the papers and stuff. And what's with this question mark, bitch? Take your French plats and fuck off. And then she asks us to guess a job. And I mean, she's already said that she's an officer of the law. So I say, you're a policewoman. And she's like, oh, how did you know? Honestly, these people. Once she's pissed off, the mayor's like, oh, she's a wee bit protective of the town. Who does this guy think he is talking in all these different accents? I know I'm giving him the accents, but you shouldn't make me think that you got a different accent because I do the accent. Anyway, a suspicious note has been sent to the town hall saying big fat shites, treasure will be mine as it was always meant to be. Lots of love from V. That's it. It proves that it's his. Why can't he just have it? Saves us the trouble, eh? Mayor one. Fine. Mayor be like, what in the world is a V? Ah, uh, yes. Thief V, no one would be so bold. <laughs> what? He goes on to explain to us that the secret treasure is actually a still a secret and hasn't even been found, and no one even knows what the treasure is. Right mate, so have you ever thought that the town's treasure could be a more abstract concept, you know, like the community of the town, or friendship, or love? 
Does it have to be a physical object? Does it have to be something expensive? I guess it. I guess you want it to be, so fine. Now the mayor is going on about some lost toothbrush. He's so cringe, just give me Ellen back. And then he just says that he's only just become the mayor. Oh bloody hell, the stuff I have to put up with here. Mayor One is fixated on what the V in Thief V stands for. I could tell you, but this is a kid's game. Mayor One then decides he wants to be a bit mean and shady, calling Thief V names. He calls him Thief Vegetable, Thief Volcano, and I'm just pleading with him to be a bit meaner. And then he calls him Thief Vanilla, and then goes on to call him Thief Violin. That one's kind of funny though, gotta admit. A camera has just been received by us for some reason. So I go and explore Big Fat Shite and its inhabitants. DJ Candy is here as per usual and she be like, DJ Candy and Pooh are in the house. Then it all gets out of hand when she goes and says, Unts, unts, bye love, bye love. Oh, here's Martin again canoodling with the mayor, who tells Martin to treat us with the utmost respect and as he should, then I receive a house key from the mayor. So after being given a tour of the town from good old Martin, we enter our new humble abode. Martin comes in too for some reason, I didn't even invite him in. Oh, make yourself at home then, love. And then he hands me a male one a drink. And I don't know if we should trust him. Us my sims, we don't eat or drink. Like, why would we start now? And also there's this mischievous music playing. And then he uses some cockney rhyming slang and he's like, We're in our Pat Malone. And me and male one, we get it, but we pretend not to because it's always funny to troll people. But to be honest, Martin is being slightly bitchy. He's giving me real Tracy vibes and it ain't right. So after drinking this weird concoction that Martin's given us, me and male one collapse on the floor. We awake nauseous, hungover and angry. Um, I think it might have been the drink that Martin gave us. We are left a note. Male one calls him Thief Videotape Guy. And oh look, he's really took that note to heart. He's very upset at being treated as an afterthought. Bless him. Then Hopkins be like, We've been bamboozled, duped, hoodwinked, and so on. Oh, you know what? I take it back. He's actually kind of funny. So I think it's Martin. I think Martin's Thief V. The V stands for the V in Martin. It is silent. It must be him, because why would he poison us? That's us, just gained our first star. <laughs> Slay as usual. And everyone, look at our secret layer. It's so cool, we can even watch TV down here. So I guess we'll go and canoodle with the townsfolk again. And this bitch, she's like, I don't think we've met before. I know you, you're my enemy self-proclaimed pretty damsel Ashley and then she tells me that I have pretty eyes and suddenly I forget why I was her enemy in the first place and I speak to this random person and she's like it's important to keep regular hours who are you? Gino De Campo. I guess they forgot about the other chef who's his cousin I can't even remember what his name was anymore and who is this crying bastard? I give him a hug and then I get a prezzy then this nervous person be like Sorry, I don't usually talk a lot. I was nervous and couldn't say anything. Grow up, mate. Who are all these NPCs? They're not even townsfolk with names. I'm not talking to them anymore. I try to get to the other areas that Martin has spoken so highly of, but I can't even go to any of them for some reason. So I guess I'll go speak to Ashley again where she tells me about beautifying the town. But because I'm sick of improving towns, I kind of glaze over and wake up once I've received an extractor from her. Has she become the Dr. F of the Agents game? I guess I'll make Basic Fountain too, but reluctantly because I thought that I was an agent, not a town improvement person. I changed my house to look cute, but somehow all my furniture disappeared, so oh, it's, fi it's fine. It's fine, everyone. And then I think at this point, I start playing this really, really boring game where you ID the Sims. You've got to remember the hair, the trousers, the top. Ugh, yawn. Shut up. So whilst in the town hall with Mail One, I'm told there is a message for me at home, which is from Mail One telling me to come to the town hall, which I was just in talking to male one. Anyway, whilst on my way back to the town hall, 
I come across this woman who looks exactly like me and makes me slip on a banana skin. What the hell? She runs into the town hall and steals the clue from the mayor. And then the mayor goes on to say a load of funny words. We've been conned. Flim flammed. Horn swoggled. And you know what? Who is fucking fuming at the mayor and mayor one? How could they fall for that? Anyway, I'm so confused at this point. I have to consult the walkthrough. I have no idea what I'm supposed to do. And it turns out I have to look at these random statues and this random bit of stone. A bloody course. Martin comes strolling along, accusing me and male one of being suspicious. And now, as if my day couldn't get any worse, there are two bloody Martins. What the hell is going on? And then Martin's like, who's this handsome bloke? What? And then they both start doing this kangaroo kick dance. What the hell is going on? This is so weird. So naturally we ask them what their favourite food is to try and suss out the phony. Martin be like, lollies and sweets. And the other Martin be like, sushi. And it is necessary when you're plotting the caper of the scent. I mean, sushi mate. What the hell does that even mean? What's caper of the scent? So we ask around town, find out some Martin facts. And we ask Abel and he's like, who's Martin? Slay. We figure out the fake and the real Thief V face is revealed to him. We chase him down but he's far too fast for our legs and it, even though he's an old, old man. And there we are, we've got our two stars now. I come across Chas McFreely and then I wander into what I initially thought was a holiday camp but it's actually a zoo. So I guess in a way, everything's a zoo when you think about it. We then meet this weird goth bitch named Violet who likes flowers because they die or something. And I do be pondering, who on earth could the tailor be? I walk in to see a girl and not that miserable bastard. Thank the lord that they got rid of Tyler. Oh my god. Oh my god everyone. It's Tim. Hello old friend. And I think that Tim remembers me. He kind of breaks the fourth wall. Or is it the third wall? But I don't care. I don't know. I don't know. But he's like... I'm that guy always in the dog costume. Oh, bless him. And he owns a sweet shop now. I guess he's after the quiet life after all that. And you know what? He deserves it. But I did think that I was supposed to be a secret agent and now this Martin wants to play hide and seek with me. So once I find him, he's like, give me more time to find a better hiding space. So I do and I've got to give it to him, I've got to hand it to him, he did find a good hiding place because I never found him. <laughs> the twat gives me a whimsical vanity, thank you. There's this also this weird dude in the zoo who's an undercover agent. I guess it's good to have a few mates around here but I wonder what he's doing. Hopkins do be hot calling us though. So we hop to the kins and Lindsay the archaeologist is on her jolly way to big fat shite as we speak but the lazy bitch wants us to find the other half of the stone tablet. So we have to travel to some island to go and retrieve it, so I head to the beach and get to chatting to Traz McFreely, who be like, I look so red standing in front of this massive ocean. Huh? Mm, yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah, sure. Oh, and here comes male one. What do you want? And oh my god, he's actually asking Chaz how he can get that to the island for me. Bless him, what a little legend. So it turns out we can get across by kite surfing like Chaz. Male One's getting a bit excited. Wait a minute, Male One wants to kite surf? Fine, go for it, Male One. I don't want to do it. It's time to whip out the old drawing tablet again. So whilst hunting it out, Chaz McFreely becomes this random bitch. She says many a proverb, some insightful, most not. Classics like, I'm so glad to be alive, there are so many people in this world. And then she tells me she broke up with a boyfriend she's just started going out with, and then says, listen to this, I have a new boyfriend, I am going to make this one last. Huh? And just like the usual My Sims mini games, I struggled for many an hour until I feel the euphoria and glory shine upon me once I have reached that island. I embody male one, 
and we do some maze mini game and end up in a temple where I actually have to use my brain and work out some puzzle. This is supposed to be a kid's game. I'm kind of mad. Anyway, male one absolutely slays it and we get that artifact back into the town. Hopkins be like, this artifact real funny. Mayor can chuck it away if you want. Then the mayor goes and patronising poor male one by calling him Sonny. SMH. Lindsay the archaeologist finally arrives and she is serving but male one is getting a bit nervous around her. Bless him. We're given the option to say that we're not proud of male one. Without hesitation, I press the proud button. But what would have happened if I had pressed the other button? There we go. More sleepless nights for me. So, I guess I will go to sleep until the next part of the game. And once daybreak arrives, I discover that the stone tablet is an actual fact. A key. Hmm. Yes. Very intriguing. Male one then calls the thief. Thief verb. We've got to tell every single cat townsfolk that the key is in the town hall. An attempt to get Thief V to come out of his lair so we can follow him into his lair. And I don't know why, I'll, I'll get the fright of my life when I see Thief V on the map. Male one then goes on to call him Thief Vowel. Male one really needs to stop because he's gonna run out of words. Male one says he's even told his dear old auntie, who doesn't even live in Big Fat Shite, about the key. It's time we sneakily follow that thief back to his evil, evil lair. It's a tough job, but someone's gotta do it. And once we sneak into that evil lair, there's this frog thing, but I kind of fuck it up and wake up next to the fish man Joseph. How horrific. What happened last night? <sighs> My second attempt was successful one, and we finally unlock the layer with the frog version of Ode to Joy. How grandiosus! And finally, we get that treasure map. We see a cutscene of poor old thief going home to the missus, and he's like, Map gone. This treasure map is. It looks so shy. What's it even supposed to be? Apparently I'm told it's the lake, so we got to make a wetsuit. Maybe this tailor bitch will do it. And I'm about to ask Tobor, you know, that agent bloke, to help with the suit. And he moves somewhere else because the period of the day has changed. And I forgot to read the four star summary thing, but who cares? I'm four stars now. So we sleep for three days until my suit wetsuit is finally made. I go to the lake, but it turns out it's the other lake. I guess male one also had a wetsuit made because he's with me as well. We finally and painstakingly open the door with our key we worked so hard for and that bastard thief V is already here. Pooh and male one fall down the trap door and thief V calls me and male one heavy. Then the twat is like Oh, lucky I laid off the dessert. What the hell? Once in the temple, we have to answer this maths question, and I got it. I got. I got it right. Talent one, intelligent queen, slay the day away. The next riddle has weird illustrations next to it, which are kind of funny. <laughs> um, Tears of the Kingdom. Who? And oh, this one is like, follow the flow of life. And it's like, what came at first, the chicken or the egg? And oh, I think we found out the mystery of who came first. <laughs> oh my God, here's that, that fucking thief guy. And the policewoman's here too. How does she even solve those problems? She's an idiot. His name's finally revealed to us. Vincent Skullfinder. A male one is as happy as Larry now. He can finally stop thinking of words that begin with V. And wow, we really did find that treasure. This area of the town is just beautiful. Turns out the treasure is a bell. A male one be like, what a great bell. All the townsfolk hear the bell. And well, I guess that's mission accomplished because we have five stars. Male one says, it turned out to be a gigantic bell. Hopkins then proclaims on behalf of Big Fat Shite, we are welcome to live in Big Fat Shite. Hell yeah, male one, mission fucking accomplished.
We watch some long ass credits and me and male one both receive Big Fat Bell to remind us of Big Fat Shite. How lovely. It's time to head to the police station and decide Vincent's punishment. Ginny be like, he deserves a stiff punishment. All right, bitch. And his punishment has him raking concrete for eternity. A year later, after My Sims Agents, My Sims Sky Heroes was released in September 2010. My Sims Sky Heroes is the sixth and final My Sims game in the series, and it is the only My Sims game that was also released on Xbox and PS3, and it actually looks kind of good on those consoles. But enough of talking about the cool versions, we're on about the DS version. So just like My Sims Racing, Sky Heroes is also developed by our favourite developers, Artificial Mind and Movement. Uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. We are greeted with the dramatic music and our story begins on a tropical beach. A paddle is being fought in the skies. Then some bitch be like, hey Derek, look, lying on the sand over there with the plane wreckage. And Derek's like, oh yeah, it's a crash pilot. This is shortly followed by them both horrifically scuttling over to me with their terrifying faces and impatiently tapping their feet. Is it me? Am I the crash pilot? Well, Derek was happy to leave me there to die. He doesn't know me. How lovely. I guess they did rescue me as I'm now in Sky Force headquarters. We meet some bloke who's called Justice, um, who was, I um, guess is just like, fucking Homelander can't. The My Sims tune be playing, but this time in a Sky Heroes type of way. Us, the player, we cannot remember who we are. However, I remember you, Violet. You were in My Sims Agents. Then our character be like, uh, I'm a pilot? So, well, let me get this straight. I can't remember who I am, but they're just gonna let me, a stranger, pilot a plane? It's fine, you know what, riding a plane looks kind of easy. I think it'd be easy. Turns out Justice just wants a load of soldiers to take on this morcubus guy. He'll have anyone in his weird little army. I create my sim. I opt for sad eyes, but I actually changed my mind. I opt to suffer the pharaoh's curse and this ancient mask, and then also wear this turkey suit, which is somewhat of a sleigh. Oh, and we can edit our voice. So we pitched that bitch up and sorted who is ready to go. We meet this guy called Finn and why is he kinda? Mm? Why is he kinda? Mm? And holy shit, I knew Pooh could talk, but this is just, this is just so hilarious. Oh bloody hell, here's old Gabby. I don't even know what they're talking about. I kinda glazed over because I've, I've, at this point, I really don't care. But one thing leads to another and I'm customising this plane I'm about to drive, so I guess I'll make my plane look like a Tui plane. Boeing 757 or something, bitch. And I guess I'll have the goo gun, please. I'll have the goo gun, please. I've also just noticed that this room is called the ready room. Get me out of this room, ready room, because I am ready to crash this plane. Amused by the Google noise, I fly the plane with difficulty, and once I return to land, all my new friends are hyping me up. Well, all apart from the jealous twat Derek. Jealousy is a disease, bitch. Morcubus, the bad bloke, is claiming the sky is his own, but the sky is definitely not his own. Like, the sky belongs to the sky, um, and it does not belong to you, Morcubus. Um, I'm sorry to say, um, I'm not. I can't be. I can't be on your side in this situation because the sky is definitely does not belong to anyone. It is just the sky. We cut to poor old Pooh, and how can anyone take us seriously looking like that? We do dog fighting or something, and it's kind of hard. And then we race this bitch named Summer, and she's like, "The last one round the track is a rotten chaos pirate, whatever the hell that is." But I guess I am a rotten chaos pirate because I lost to that bitch. I say fuck this game. And then I decide to plug in my controller and 
Oh yeah, how the tables have turned because I am now winning. Derek then asked me where I learned that one last move and you know what Derek? I just pressed a button just then and that's where I learned it. Pooh giggles like, yeah I don't know. We've unlocked Pirate Cove, how thrilling. And patrolling with Barney is our next quest, as if we know who Barney is. Well look at him, why does he look like that? And why is he surrounded with girls in sailor suits? And why does he call them sweetheart? Pooh be like, <laughs> I know, wait, I've just found out that Myra is Barney's daughter. Whoops. Justice just be giggling at the fact that he's received some disturbing intel about Morcubus. So they're all worried about their lack of pilots, but Pooh is always chimes in with her two cents looking like this. We've unlocked my favourite location in the world, a dream, luxury, bucket list destination. Ah, yes. Supercomputer. Justice just chatting absolute bollocks about losing a lot of pilots over these ice cream cone fields. Wait, what? They died? Ice cream cones? Died? A kid's game? Ice cream cone? And then Justice goes on to happen to mention Dr. Ref in passing. Is this the Dr. Ref whose tash is tingling with misfortune or something? I can't remember what he exactly said. Who don't even care what Justice has to say. She's just like... I'm gonna find him, bye. I'm blown away, Dr. F can speak. And oh my god, there's the pet and Sue guy. I can't remember what his name was, was it um, to to Tobor? Well, now his name is Makoto Nagi, the ultimate cunt. Yeah, and also, fuck him, this battle thing was so difficult, but eventually I do it. And at the end, Pooh was like, that was fun, but I'm only here to give you a message. And Dr. Raffi doesn't even want to help his old friend Justice. Or Pooh, after all I've done for you. You throw it back in my face. Travelling to the next place on our old map, Tiki Island, and I reckon that we reckon it and report that reckon back. So we collect a load of old-fashioned cameras that are scattered around the shop. And I don't know if anybody else does, but... I really love entering a good old waterfall. Once we've reported back to Violet, she'd be like, there are ninja shaped objects all over Tiki Land. Could this be my chance to of meeting blue haired Fortnite man? Derek is just a big fat weeb though. He's like saying jutsus and shit. To be honest, he actually does look like that one bloke from My Hero Academia. You know, that Homelander one. Pooh always has some smart ass comment to say. Bloody hell. Justice is just running some sort of cult and he wants me to recruit the ninjas as well. What has Pooh let herself in for? Well, I guess I really should improve my Tui plane at this point. And the stats are good now, but Jesus Christ, she is ugly. But it's still slaying the game. I didn't even realise that DJ Candy was helping me. They call themselves Gal Force 4. But they all seem kind of pissed off at DJ Candy for having dance parties. DJ Candy is fine to join our cult though, of whatever we're doing. She's even going to make a sweet playlist of battle songs for our F-Pod. F-Pod? I bet Dr. F made it. Back to the old stomping ground in Pirate Cove and I'm told to defend some generator for two minutes. And apparently I was successful, but I definitely did not defend anything. Myra like be like, calm down dad, why don't you grab your gear and we'll go fishing and he's like, yeah yeah, that's a good idea. <laughs> what? I think I should have a break after defending your generator. And Myra then exposes her father's two favourite things, catch fish and complain. This is when the creativity of the names start to diminish, when we unlock this level, Canyon. We have a cheeky game of aeroplane basketball and a word of warning, do not call DJ Candy a DJ. She prefers the term turntablist. So to my absolute disgust, I find out there is yet another area. I end up beating the ninja from Fortnite, even though they were so scary and literally chasing after me. But then they have the cheek to be like, why are you attacking us? We're mere peasants farming our land. But they're actually ninjas, they just hold a life for no reason the hell and oh god look at jimmy he tells us they have an arrangement with more corp and uh, it's like of course you fucking do jimmy of course you do this is where i probably should have rage quit and put myself out of all this misery this was a hard level trying to take down this plane before it got to its destination for some reason and once completed violet be like 
this really helps with the war. What have I even agreed to? What have I got myself into? Justice be like, kid, are you okay? And Pooh will be like, <laughs> Pooh has like some sort of vision of her before the crash and she's evil laughing with Morcubus. Suddenly Derek says, get her legs. Well, that's a bit forward. But I do think that Pooh should be on the side of Morcubus because it'd be so much easier. I wouldn't even have to battle all these enemies, they're all stronger than me anyway. Derek then states, Any suspicious behaviour and rat a tat tat kaboom. Fuck off you twat. Always had something against me from day one just because I slay. And you know what? I say these names the places are going downhill. Here is Rome Arena. What the fuck planet am I even on? Now there's another captain bloke here, n aptly named Skip, talking absolute bollocks, and I'm not listening to that. However, Pooh is just so cunty. She's like, More Q Corp ain't doing so hot lately, so if you want to be on the winning team, give me a call. Pooh has such an attitude now. She She's never been like this before. But Skip is just like, my men are very financially motivated, if you know what I mean. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Well, he doesn't say that, but I read between the lines, and it's definitely sad. Everyone, this next area is just called Spooky. They gave up at this point, didn't they? Oh, here's the ghostly squadron. But I'm sorry, everyone, when is this game going to end? There's just too many things going on. Here is Goth Boy again, and Zombie Carl. Oh... All these residents of Spooky be arguing and Pooh is just like, fuck it, I'm out of here. And then she says, um, is this a bad time? Uh, I'll come back later. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> like I could be any more disappointed with the name of Spooky. This next area is just called Ice. It's called Ice. Not like Ice Kingdom or Ice snowland or iceland or no just ice it's called ice the level's called I anyway i have to prove myself here justice happens to mention the legendary chas mcfreely in passing and tells Pooh that she's kind of like chas Pooh's like let's go recruit him but oh no chas isn't a villain like morcubus but more of a pr villain and has become a shameless self-promoter and thinks he's better than everyone i'm sorry but these words are too long for me never mind a child off we go to ice and chas he don't look happy like he used to and just assumes that i'm a fan of him and offers us a copy of fly mcfreely on dvd and a free chas lithograph oh my god Vic Vector. What an absolute pleasure. Well, I've done something wrong, probably because Pooh is so annoying and the Chaz O'Noughts assemble and they be like, Chaz Force. What's even going on? So, they beat me to a pulp in a three against one match in the Collect the Green Circles game. You know what, fuck them. Fuck these random people. But eventually, through some miracle, I beat them. No one wants to even join the Sky Squadron. And you know what? I don't blame them. It's rubbish and that Derek is so nasty. He is a, a right piece of work. But guys, this next part is where I've had to end the game due to personal issues. We have to prove ourselves to the Chas McFreely once more. But this time, fair enough. It's a one-on-one -on -one bit of a more of a even playing field but after many attempts at this race i didn't realize you could quit the race because Chaz was too fast so even though i knew i had lost i had to go through all those bloody rings to get out the level Chaz has won he's lingering around like an 18 year old in a courser outside a high school and you know what he's shooting me he's shooting me i've lost i know i've lost and he's shooting me He's shooting me with the upside down thing. And I'm struggling enough, mate. I'm struggling enough, mate. I feel like this is a personal attack. At this point, I'm screaming at the game. I'm screaming at a game. I'm almost in tears. The personal issue was a fictional character. But anyway, that's all I played of it. I'm not playing anymore. No. 
Chas McFreely has left a bad taste, soured my whole experience of the My Sims series. So, you know what? McFreely off. You've ruined it. You've ruined the game. Well, this series has exhausted me. I probably shouldn't have played all the games as much as I did. But we did it. I think that if the game was just a trilogy with My Sims, My Sims Kingdom, My Sims Agents, a beautiful little trilogy and has improved with each game, but no, they've got those little ones in between. I'll start at the beginning. My Sims. Yeah, it was it was a decent game, you know, but it did go on for a very long time. But it was good and I didn't 100% it, like that person on Reddit did, but I got five stars and I don't want to watch those credits, I'm not gonna lie. With My Sims Kingdom, yeah, that was good. You know, it didn't take a long time to get the stars and complete it, really. I mean, I'm not looking for a quick game, but I'm looking for one that's a couple of hours, not 45 hours. But it was good, and there was that kayaking mini game, and you know, winning that just made me feel such joy. You know, I'm, I like feeling happy. So if I've got to feel a little bit sad to feel happy, I'm going to take it. What am I even talking about? My Sims Party. I mean, if it's like you could choose between My Sims Party or Mario Party, you're going to choose Mario Party, aren't you? But I mean, it's definitely something that would be would have been fun for me to play with the old siblings. But playing it on your own, playing it on your own in 2023 is just not, it just ain't it. <laughs> playing it in 2023 on your own. Then you've got My Sims Racing. That was that was pretty good. I mean, I was enjoying that, even though it was developed by Artificial Mind and Movement. I enjoyed it. It was fun. The only problem was that I didn't set up my controller, did I? That was the problem. But, you know, that's me. That's on me. That's on me. But it was all right, considering all considerings. Then we have My Sims Agents. Now, that was just the pinnacle of all games. Oof. It was the best My Sims game. I really enjoyed that. I feel like all the characters were really good in it. I don't know whether they were really well written. Like, I really liked Mail One. <laughs> I really liked Mail One, though. And it, um, it was funny calling the guy all the uh, words he could think of beginning with V. I thought that was so funny. I don't know why. Tiny brain in it. The last game My Sim Sky Heroes. My Sim Sky Heroes for the other, other platforms looks it looks fun it looks good it looks like the controls work my sims sky heroes my sims sky heroes for ds if this is your favorite childhood game i don't know what to tell you this that game is not sorry everyone i just really didn't like that game it really has exhausted me anyway wow if you've made it through this video you know you deserve the proper prudence pun award anyway thank you watching my video i really appreciate it as always i was wondering why this video was taking me so long to make and then i realized when i saw it all come together and it was over an hour and i was like oh this is why it's taking so long to make anyway thanks again for watching and i'll get to work as soon as possible on the next one i'm gonna go and have a lie down now and never think about my sims ever again <laughs> Appetit Appetit Appetit